Now in most games you need some sort of hit test to see whether one item has hit another. So what we need to do obviously is we need to create a new sprite that is sort of like a wall. So I'm going to create a wall sprite here and I'm probably going to make it something a little bit more interesting than a black line. So we're going to make it a brown line which indicates that it's a wall and maybe put some lines on it here so that they look like bricks almost. Okay, so clearly I'm not a talented artist. So I'm going to hit OK. And what I have then now is I have two sprites. And remember that I have to rename it because I don't want to be working with 20 sprites that are called Sprite 1, Sprite 2, Sprite 3. So down here I have my purple guy and I have my wall. And notice how when I click on those, you get that funny thing happening here. Now that's because any of the scripts that are here are attached to the actual sprite. So if I have my purple guy here, have when I click him, then he points towards my mouse and moves 10 steps like I did in one of the other tutorials, but I'll change that to two so he moves a bit slower. Um, when I have that happening, oh, I forgot, I have to put my forever around it. When I have that happening, okay, so he moves along here. If I press stop, and if I click on the wall, you'll notice that there's no script actually attached to the wall. So that script is specifically attached to that purple guy. Because if I have that script just generic, then what will happen is every single... Um, sprite here will follow my mouse pointer and you obviously don't want the wall following the mouse pointer. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the wall and what we're going to have happen is well, we'll have to have some sort of event that triggers this and we're going to have basically and if this connects with this then something happens like a sounds um, played. So we're going to have an if And we're going to have some sort of sense here. So we're going to have touching. So I'm going to drag the touching into the if. Now, because this is on the wall, what we're going to have is if um, we're touching the purple guy. Okay, so if we're touching the purple guy, then something's going to happen. So I might make a sound happen. So I'm going to play a sound. And I'm going to record a sound. Here we go, ready? Ouch! I'll just play that. Ouch. Okay. So when he hits the um when he hits the wall, then we're gonna play the sound recording one. So if I go across to my sounds here, I probably should rename that as ouch. Um, and I'm going to make sure that I change that here to ouch. So when um the little flag is clicked, if whatever we're on at the moment, which is the wall is touching the purple guy, play the sound, ouch. So let's click on it and nothing happens. All right, which is a good thing because at the moment that's not touching that. So if I make this happen so that the wall is actually touching the purple guy and click this, ouch. I will get an ouch. Now, that's good because that means that that little bit of script there worked. Now, what happens if I go across it now? nothing. The problem is that at the moment I've got here when my little flag is clicked if I'm touching the purple guy I play the sound ouch. So that happens when I click the flag. However it doesn't continue to happen. So what we need to do is grab that forever again and drag it around here. So when I click it two things are happening. My little purple guy is following my mouse but also if you notice Okay, um, what happens is, if you notice that when I click on that, this white thing here is hi highlighted and that means that that's actually active too. What I can also do if I play this sound, I can also do things like move him. So I can move him, say, a hundred steps and I can move him a hundred steps to the right, for example. 
right? Um, so if I'm touching the purple guy, then I'm going to play the sound ouch and I'm going to point in the right direction and move 100 steps. So let's play that now. So if I go here, ouch. oh, ouch. it's moving the wall away. Ouch. Okay. Now, say for example, if I also wanted to add a score. So if I go to variable, I want to make a variable and I'm going to call it score and it's going to be for all sprites at the moment. Okay, so I've got here, I've got my score equals zero. So every time if I move my wall back here, um, if I'm touching the purple guy, play the sound ouch, and I'm going to change score by one, which means that I'm going to add one to the score every time that happens. So let's press play again. So you'll notice there I got two, and the, play, the sound actually played twice also. So at the moment I've now got on this little man here, I've got a forever loop, which is one of the control structures, a loop. And on my wall here, I've actually got a forever structure, which is a loop. And then also I've got an if structure, which is a decision, which is another one of the control structures. And I've also then got some other things happening. I'm changing a variable, which is another skill and I'm moving stuff around and playing sounds. So there's a number of skills that I've shown in this program.